Shalom, brother and sister in Christ. Welcome to our online service for the sixth Sunday of Easter. Let us pray with the colleague of the day. God, our Redeemer, you have delivered us from the power of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of your Son. Grant that as by his death he has recalled us to life, so by his continual presence in us, he may raise us to eternal joy through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us sing a song to praise our Lord. In him be 
found, oh yeah Dressed in his righteousness alone Faultless stand before the throne Let us have a few minutes reflection before we pray the confession together. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our fellow men in thought and word and deed, in the evil we have done and in the good we have not done. Through ignorance, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, we are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, Pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from John chapter 14, verses 23 to 29. Jesus replied, Anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. My Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. Anyone who does not love me will not obey my teaching. These words you hear are not my own. They belong to the Father who sent me. All this I have spoken while still with you. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your heart be troubled and do not be afraid. You heard me saying, I am going away and I am coming back to you. If you love me, you would be glad that I am going to the Father. For the Father is greater than I. I have told you now before it happens, so that when it does happen, you will believe. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Shalom, brothers and sisters. Praise the Lord. We are able to meet online again. Today is the sixth Sunday of Easter. The text that was read to us is from John chapter 14, verses 23 to 29. And I just want to highlight these two words, love and peace. But this is not, you know, a general love or peace that the world speaks about. But let us pay attention how the Lord, what the Lord Jesus teaches us through these uh, verses about love and peace. Now, we won't be reading the text again. As we start... Let us pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, once again, we thank you for the gift of life. Without you, Father, there is no life in us and there is no salvation, no peace, no joy. Because as part of the human world, we are sinners. But we thank you for the good news that Jesus loved us and gave himself for us. And this morning, once again, we thank you for the gift of your word as recorded by uh, the disciple of our Lord Jesus, John. And the Lord, we pray you may teach us through these words. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So as an introduction, we... Let us remind ourselves that uh, from chapter chapters 13 to 17 in the Gospel of John, uh, the Apostle John records for us 
the last words of the Lord Jesus. Chapter 13 begin with the, what is known as the Last Supper with Jesus washing the disciples' feet and uh, prophesying about uh, or telling before it happened about his uh, betrayal by Judas. But from uh, then on, uh, Judas left the supper and then from carry on from verse, chapters 14 to 17 uh, are the last words before uh, in chapter 18 the Lord Jesus was arrested by uh, the authorities led by Judas. So these are very precious words and uh, as I read it, as I uh, learn from it, I realize that actually our Lord Jesus uh, repeats certain themes, yeah? certain themes that he kind of repeat and go deeper. So uh, this is a very important uh, teaching of our Lord Jesus. And uh, the Apostle John saw it fit to, send, to spend five chapters, yeah? five chapters, it is about uh, one quarter of his gospel on these last words. So it do well that we pay attention to these words. And the other thing is that also remind ourselves that we are looking at it from a post-Easter view. In fact, all the Gospels, uh, the letters, are written after the Lord Jesus' resurrection because the church only started uh, after Je Jesus' resurrection and His ascension and the coming of the Holy Spirit. Yeah, so we always bear it in mind. Yeah? So uh, I hope that when we look at these verses, we will also remember that the Lord Jesus has resurrected from the dead and the apostles have saw him and have witnessed to this wonderful fact. Yeah? So we come to uh, come closer to the chapter. The context is, uh, this is in chapter 14. In chapter 14. So in chapter 14, as it begins, we find that the Lord Jesus emphasizes to the disciples that He is in the Father. And I hope you remember that the Father Jesus meant is God. And to the Israelites, to the Jews, God is Almighty God. You are not just a little God here, another God there or a Goddess there. Yeah? But God Almighty, the Creator of heaven and earth. One God. Yeah? So. Uh, Jesus said that he is in God and God is in him and very astounding. In fact, he told the disciples, you know, I've been with you for so long. Didn't you know that the Father is in me and I in the Father? As he replied to one of the disciples. And these words are astounding words. Yeah, who can say it? Yeah, who can say that? And then later, uh, part of it also, then the Lord Jesus said, uh, he is the way, the truth and the life. No one goes to the Father but by Him. No one goes to the Father but by Him. Uh, brothers and sisters, friends, we can take it safely that the Apostle John is the closest to Jesus. So we have reason to believe that what he heard Jesus say, of course this is not contradicting to any of the other Apostles, uh, but he very clearly set out for us Jesus amazing identity so if you heard me uh, before you all you will always remember that I always say that Jesus identity is uh, crucial yeah, to his message it's not just about what Jesus said but also who he was and is yeah so here uh, we find before our text uh, Jesus was explaining to the disciples that he is the way, the only way uh, to God the Father. That's why we preach the gospel. He is the truth, yeah, and he is life itself. So these are not easy claims, yeah, but uh, this is the context. When we come to verses 23 to 29, which we will look into, and then uh, at the end of it, uh, the next chapter, chapter 15, is very well known. Uh, teaching or that the Lord t 
told the disciples that he is the true wine and his disciples, those who follow him, who continue to follow him are the branches and the branches cannot bear fruit without abiding or staying connected yeah, uh, with Jesus. Yeah. So actually there is a progress uh, in you know, more detailed teaching uh, coming on. You know, verse, uh, chapter 15, 16 and then chapter 17, the Lord Jesus uh, prayer for his church, for his disciples and those who uh, believe in them, in their message thereafter, which includes us. Yeah, we are there. We are part of the prayer of the Lord Jesus. I mean, those he prayed for. Hallelujah. Okay, we come back to our, our text this morning. So we look at Jesus, uh, uh, what he said here. I titled it as Jesus' words, verses 23 to 24. Jesus' words. So I want to highlight this because that's all I can do. Yeah. Uh, the Lord Jesus says, those who love him, love Jesus, will obey his words. Yeah, that means the words of the Lord Jesus. Those who love Jesus will obey Jesus' words. I highlight the word will because that is what it is there in, 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 in the text will. Um, it is the word will there, to me, it signifies the voluntariness. That means Jesus never forced anyone to obey his words. But it should be out of love. If somebody truly loves Jesus, they will obey his words. You know, it's a voluntary action. You love Jesus, you obey his words. It's not that you must love, you must obey his words whether you love Jesus or not. Because if you go further, if we you know, continue in Jesus, you realize without loving Jesus, it's impossible to obey his words. Only that love for Jesus will enable someone or anyone to obey him to the end. Yeah, that's why uh, we find later after his resurrection when the Lord Jesus spoke to Peter who denied him three times Jesus asked Peter three times you know do you love me because without this love Peter will not be able to overcome you know his sense of fail failure or guilt and receive forgiveness and then carry on to follow Jesus you know, and fulfill God's purpose for Peter in leading the early church. So Jesus said, those who love Jesus will obey his words. This is, this is a touchstone, you know, this is a, a real test. So whether we love Jesus or not, is also expressed whether we obey his, his words or not. Yeah. And where do we get his words? Where do we get his words? Yeah, Jesus uh, you know, in, his, uh, in Matthew chapter 28, you know, the Great Commission, is it teaching them to obey all that I have taught you? So it was the duty of the disciples, the apostles, to pass on Jesus' words. And the fact, today we have the Bible with us, you know, the Bible, uh, the 66 books of the Old and New Testament, and especially the New Testament recorded the words of Jesus himself in the four Gospels and also the letters inspired by the Holy Spirit through his apostles, Peter, James, John, and the others, Paul. Yeah, The words of Jesus are here recorded for us. And so we have no excuse, my dear brothers and sisters, if you have a Bible. Yeah, that's why there are missions in the world that share the Bible. They just share the Word of God so that Every nation can read the Word of God in their language so that they can know Jesus, love Jesus, and obey His words. Okay, let's move on. And then this is astounding what Jesus said. Jesus' words are God's word. You know, Jesus said, uh, He said, My words are not mine, but the Father who sent me. That means Jesus doesn't simply speak. When He speaks, He spoke God's word. Yeah, he spoke the Father, that is God Almighty's word. And that is how serious, yeah, how serious and the authority that Jesus' word has. You know, so we, we should not, uh, you know, play play with God's word. We should take God's word, uh, Jesus' word seriously, you know, uh, meaningfully, you know, with understanding and obedience. 
And then, this is the great promise that the Lord said. Let us, I think we should uh, read this in uh, verse 24. Yeah, 24. Uh, verse 24. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words, and the word that you hear is not mine, but the Father who sent me. Yeah. But verse 23, sorry, I, sh I should be reading verse 23. Jesus answered him, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. God and Jesus will make their home with them, you know, with the disciples, with those who obey Jesus' words. Yeah. So... This really answers a question. We say, often we say, oh, it's like God is not with me. Brothers and sisters, if we want God and Jesus and, you, and the Holy Spirit, of course, to be with you, you know, that they make their home in your heart with you, then there is the condition that you must obey Jesus' words. Not just what we think are Jesus' words, but actually as recorded in the Word of God, as recorded in the Bible. Otherwise, we are just make-believe. We think that God is doing this. Are we sure or not? Yeah? Because even the devil knows God's words and twists God's words. See, so all along you know, in the 2000 years, of course there are patches yeah, where the word of God is neglected and then the church becomes weak and, and, uh, the, you know, and uh, things are in trouble. But thankfully these days, those who truly want the word of God, it is available to them, to you and I. And so this is, we come back again to these three things, very important. Those who love Jesus will obey his words, will, voluntarily and joyfully, you know, of their own choice, they will. God never forced anyone to obey him. Even at the beginning of creation, you know, wonder of wonders, you know, even in the first book in Genesis, God spoke to Cain and, and told him, you know, uh, you must take care. You, know? you don't. You don't let your anger or your jealousy. I mean, uh, that is a explanation of the meaning. You know, take over. Sin crouches at the door, and you must master it. You know, so it's up to Cain to obey. You know, not to obey his his uh, anger, his feelings, but to obey God. So those who love Jesus will obey His words, and then. Jesus' words are God's word. It carry authority. In fact, Jesus said elsewhere that at the end of the day, in the judgment, Jesus' words will judge the people. You know, it's not our neighbor's words. It's not just anybody's word, any human being's words, but Jesus' words. So how important are Jesus' words? And then God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit, of course, will make their home with them. Meaning that if we want... God and Jesus, the Holy Trinity, to be with us, then we must obey Jesus' words. So how much do you and I know, understand, and obey Jesus' words? Let it be our goal, you know, our daily goal every day to meditate on Jesus' words, on the Bible, and let God, you know, uh, meet us every day by His grace. Okay, we continue and then uh, Jesus moved on about the Holy Spirit in verses 25 to 26. And uh, Jesus, because at that time, if we come back to the original sin, uh, original uh, occasion, Jesus was about to leave them, yeah, his final words. So Jesus promised them that as he, when he leaves them, the Holy Spirit will come to them. In fact, Jesus is actually repeating what he said earlier in chapter 14. Yeah, if you look at it, yeah, there's no time for us to go through the details, but you look at it, brothers and sisters, Jesus again mentioned the Holy Spirit. And then after this, we find that uh, in parts of chapter 15, 16, 17, Jesus again mentioned the Holy Spirit and explained even further. Yeah, but this is important. Jesus said the Holy Spirit will come to the disciples after he left. Yeah, while he was with them, Jesus spoke these words, taught them. Yeah, and of course, over the three years. And then the Holy Spirit is present to teach and remind them of all of Jesus' words. To teach and remind them of all of Jesus' words. So uh, 
the the fact that we we get the New Testament, yeah, primarily, and also the Gospel, uh, you know, as the foundation, it is the work of the Holy Spirit, yeah, allowing and inspiring Matthew, Mark, Luke, uh, John, you know, to write down uh, Jesus' teaching, although it is from uh, written by four different persons, yeah, but all of them reminds us of Jesus' words. So. If we have the four Gospels and also the other teachings in the New Testament, then we actually have all of Jesus' words. That's why, brothers and sisters, it's so important. And here Jesus reminds us again, even when the Holy Spirit comes, the Holy Spirit is not there just to, you know, do miracles and make us so excited, you know, waiting for the Holy Spirit to touch people to fall down. Okay, they fall down and they get up, but are their lives changed? Do they know Jesus' words? You know? And so Jesus tells them, the Holy Spirit come to reteach and remind them of all of Jesus' words so that they can obey. Of course, the Holy Spirit can work miracles, can do signs and wonders, as we saw in the book of Acts. But the teachings are so important because God changes us not like a robot. Just press a button, then the Spirit fills you. No, those are like people in the trance, you know, those evil spirits. Those guys, you know, under these spirits that are not of God, they don't know what they're doing. But the Holy Spirit transforms us, our nature, so that we can be more like Christ. And that is voluntarily. And because of that, it is the changing of our thinking, our mind, you know, our habits. So this is the good news. Jesus is not with us anymore or with the disciples then after he was arrested. But the Holy Spirit came to teach and remind them of all of Jesus' words. Let us move on. Jesus' peace, verses 27 to 28. Jesus' peace is not of the world. Uh, I'd like to read from verse 27. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. Okay. So Jesus' peace is not of the world. So we have to answer this question. What is what peace does the world offer? Yeah. And then we have to ask the question, what is the world? So what is the world, brothers and sisters? The world is, you know, as we are born into the world, the world is, you know, all that we can see or hear, you know, and feel and run about, or even if you go up uh, on a plane and you see, you know, this physical world. Yeah. So there is a peace that this world gives that is... Uh, you know, if you have food and water and drinks and everything, everything is fine, everybody healthy, wealthy, jolly, you know, things going well, as we think. Uh, there's money around, everybody happy, no sickness, no death, nothing. But of course, this is not what the world offers. Yeah, the good side of it, uh, we think. But of course, the Bible tells us, as a result of human sin, there is suffering, uh, there is all kinds of evil happening, uh, corruption, uh, dishonesty, you know, all kinds of sin, you know, and when there is such things, uh, uh, there is actually no peace. So the, the peace that the world gives is not a true or lasting peace. It, it is linked up, you know, with uh, what is visible. And of course, if we are older, you know, we, we really think that, oh boy, uh, we are sick, we are sickly, and all those things, there's no peace. And then we are worried about so many things. And of course, then we are worried about what happens after we die. Uh, so, but Jesus' peace is not of the world. Yeah, not of the world. And of course, if you look at the Lord Jesus' life, you know, he has so much opposition, so much misunderstanding. And even in death, you know, he didn't die in peace in that sense, but he had peace that overcome the anger, the malice, you know, the misunderstanding of the Jewish people and the soldiers and all that. Yeah. So Jesus offers peace, not of the world. But basically, 
we can say Jesus' peace is Jesus' presence in the lives of the disciples. Jesus' presence in the lives of the disciples. It is as though Jesus is with us and having Jesus' attitude and uh, thinking and mindset and faith and love, you know, his peace. This is what Jesus promised. See, my peace I leave with you. I give to you. It is a gift. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Yeah, and then he said, do not be troubled in your heart. Do not be troubled in your heart. So if we look at verse 1 of chapter 14, the Lord Jesus actually started uh, this, started what we call chapter 14 as, let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in, my, in me. And Jesus said, in my father's house are many rooms. You see, so Jesus knew that they are troubled, the disciples. And he told them, do not be troubled. Jesus' peace is with them. His promise. And of course, looking uh, after the Lord Jesus' resurrection, we realize that the reason Jesus tells them and the peace that he gives to them is a peace that overcomes death. It is a fearlessness, you know, of uh, uh, judgment, a fearlessness of death itself, death itself, because there is the resurrection. So Jesus tell them, do not be, don't let, do not be troubled, because there will be trouble. There will be trouble for them, especially you know when the uh, authorities come arrest Jesus and all that. Yeah. So G, uh, Jesus tell them, do not be troubled. In the same way, Jesus is also telling us today, do not be troubled. There will be trouble. There comes to trouble us. But he said, do not let that control you and I. And that is where the absence or the presence of Jesus' peace will make a difference. And then he also said, you know, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Of course, if you look at, if you remember the resurrection records, uh, the disciples were afraid. Although the ladies, you know, uh, Mary Magdalene saw Jesus, but they were afraid. So they gathered under locked doors. Yeah, they were afraid. But Jesus appeared to them in the resurrected body. And you know, grant, and he said again, Peace be with you. You know, uh, touch my hand and my side. It is me. So Jesus, from the post resurrection, after Jesus rose on the day, all the more, brothers and sisters, we understand why Jesus said, Do not be troubled, do not be afraid. But it is not of this world, it is from Jesus, Jesus' resurrection. So, brothers and sisters, it's so important for us to understand that the peace that the Lord Jesus gives to the disciples and also to us as we believe and follow Jesus is not of the world. It is a peace that overcomes the troubles, the fearfulness, the challenges of this world and also the result of sin. Yeah, so it is Jesus' presence in their lives and it is what Jesus promised to them and also promised to us. And of course, we realize after Pentecost after the Holy Spirit came upon the disciples, they, they were fearless. They no longer fear. You know, they were fearless. They even preached the gospel, you know, and even if they're caught and put in prison, you know, there is joy in them. There's an assurance of eternal life. And that is Jesus' peace. And this is promised to you and I. Yeah, so during COVID-19, and we don't know what is in the future, let us believe Jesus experience his presence and his peace as we obey his word. So finally, in verse 29, uh, Jesus going away. Uh, it's amazing what, you know, Jesus going away, the Lord, what, what the Lord Jesus said. Uh, I, I read uh, verse 29. Yeah. Verse 29. And now I have told you before it takes place, so that when it does take place, you may believe. Sorry, I need to read verse 28 as well. Yeah. You heard me say to you, I am going away and I will come to you. If you love me, you would have rejoiced because I am going to the Father. For the Father is greater than I. So we find here uh, the occasion. Again, we are reminded Jesus is going away. And so he told the disciples. And I'm sure there are precious lessons for us to learn here. Yeah, verses 28 and 29. So the first one is, Jesus is going to the Father. That is going to God. Yeah? Jesus is going to God. Jesus 
assuredly he knows where he's going. Yeah, and uh, it'll be it'll be a great disaster if he follows someone who doesn't know where he's going. Yeah, but not Jesus. Yeah, Jesus knew where he was going. He said, "I'm going to the Father." He knew that he's going to God, and he came from God. Yeah, so he's going back to God. And then he says, "The Father is greater than I." Jesus said, yeah, "The Father is greater than Jesus." Um, in this case, you know, we are reminded uh, the hope about the Holy Trinity: yeah? God, the Father, God, the Son, and God, the Holy Spirit. Yeah. So Jesus here says, "The Father is greater than I." That is greater than Jesus Himself. Of course, when we look at Jesus here, Jesus is the Man, Jesus. Yeah, the Man, Jesus. So we know that Jesus submitted to the Father. Yeah, as a man, he humbled himself, taking the form of a servant, and being found in uh, human likeness, he became obedient to death and even uh, death on the cross. Yeah. So we can we can see here that Jesus' submission to the Father as God the Son, and also as Jesus the Man. That the Father is greater than Jesus. Yeah. So Jesus is not afraid of anybody. You know, he's not afraid of the Pharisees or the Jews or Pilate or whoever. And he's not even afraid of death because he knew yeah, his father is greater than all. And Jesus said he's greater than me, uh, Jesus himself. But he submitted, yeah, so he submitted to the father. And uh, what has that to do with us? Yeah? So Jesus said, you know, uh, since I'm going to the Father, you should rejoice because the Father is greater than I. Yeah. Uh, of course, probably the disciples, you know, will rejoice if Jesus didn't die, you know, and become the king there and then in Jerusalem and they reign with him, you know, in Jerusalem there and then 2,000 years ago. But Jesus told them they should rejoice because he is going back to the Father. Yeah, he's going back to the Father. Who is greater than all. So nobody will harm Jesus. And also because Jesus is with God. Who is greater than all. And Jesus is all, always God. And Jesus always loving the disciples. So they should be glad. Nothing will harm them. Yeah. So what is going on in the world. Although they oppose God. Because of sin. And because of the work of the devil. And the, all the evil spirits. And all the enemies of God, yet the disciples should rejoice because God is greater than all. And what is happening, God allows, even God allows Jesus to die on the cross. But having uh, uh, redeemed the people from their sins, you know, his blood cleansed the people from the sin, Jesus rose from the dead. You see, so the disciples should rejoice. And what about us? Should we rejoice that Jesus is now uh, with God, the Father in heaven? And yes, uh, Ascension Day is coming. Yeah, the 40, after forty days, Jesus ascended to heaven, and we remember that uh, as uh, Thursday, yeah, as the Ascension Day. So, in Ascension Day, we should rejoice because God, Jesus, is already with the Father, and Jesus is our friend. Jesus is our Lord. So what can harm us, you know? I, I think the Lord Jesus is really telling them that, yeah. So don't feel sorry for Jesus because he died on the cross, because that was for the purpose of saving us from our sins. But now Jesus is with God the Father, greater than all. Yeah. I hope we can catch that. Yeah. And in fact, Jesus is praying for us. Hallelujah. And so Jesus say, he said, I told you this so that you may believe before it took place. Uh, before it take place, I told you already so that you believe. So today, all the more we should believe Jesus. Yeah, because he has been through all that. You look at the records of the four Gospels about Jesus' resurrection, about his miracles, about all that he did. Uh, and before he died, he said he will rise from the dead. And then he rose from the dead. And that is the why the church started. The disciples believed. They saw him for 40 days. Yeah. And then the Holy Spirit also came upon the disciples on Pentecost, as Jesus promised. 
So looking back, you know, all the words of Jesus are fulfilled. Jesus promised them, didn't he? Didn't he? As we saw just now, after I left, you know, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. And so on the day of Pentecost, 10 days after Ascension Day, we remember the first Pentecost when the Holy Spirit came upon the disciples. And it is because of the presence of the Holy Spirit. Yeah, and with the Holy Spirit, the presence of God the Father and God the Son, Jesus, the Holy Trinity is with us. So when we look back from uh, post-Easter view, all the more, my dear brothers and sisters, we should believe this same Jesus. May God grant us the grace. May we with humble hearts, believing hearts, continue to believe Jesus till the end. Okay, so for reflection and response, uh, today I have uh, more questions for us. Help, help, uh, I, I believe they are helpful. You may just focus on one, on, one, and one or two of them. Yeah. So the first one, how does Jesus' resurrection impact Jesus' words? You know, looking back, the resurrection has taken place. Jesus has ascended into heaven. The Holy Spirit is given to us already. So when we look at all this, you know, so when we read Jesus' words, when we think about Jesus' words and commands and teachings, you know, what should be our response? How does his resurrection impact us as we meet Jesus' words? Number two, how do you truly love Jesus? If you have a question in your mind, you know, I really want to love Jesus. How do I love Jesus? I think the text already told us uh, how we truly love Jesus. The third question, how do we get to know Jesus' words and teaching? You may ask, wow, if Jesus' words are God's words, His teaching we are to obey, and uh, we experience His peace, where do I get Jesus' teaching? I hope you and I will know. Yeah. Number four, how are you living in Jesus' peace? If not, why not? Jesus promises peace to His disciples, to those who love Him, obey His words. Jesus said, you know, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives. So how are you living, experiencing Jesus' peace? If not, why not? And lastly, do you truly believe Jesus? Do you truly believe Jesus? When it matters, you know, in your daily life, in your decisions, in our responses, in the words we speak, in the thoughts we think, do we truly believe Jesus' words? When there is a conflict, do you believe Jesus? Do you and I obey Jesus? These are very important questions, my brothers and sisters. It's not enough to hear, even to understand what Jesus is saying, but do you truly believe Him? So if there are two questions uh, we really need to consider, or if, if you have no time, so the first one is, do you love Jesus? How do you know you love Jesus? And then is this one, do you truly believe Jesus? So here again are the five questions. How does Jesus' resurrection impact Jesus' words? How do you truly love Jesus? How do we get to know Jesus' words and teaching? How are you living in Jesus' peace? If not, why not? Do you truly believe Jesus? Let us pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you again for this opportunity to look in greater detail about the Lord Jesus' teaching in chapter 14, verses 23 to 29 of John chapter 14. Help us, God, not only to know and understand, but truly to obey, to follow the words and teaching of your son Jesus. Help us, Lord. Increase our faith, O Lord. Thank you, Father. We continue to commend the rest of this service to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 
let us affirm our faith by reciting the Apostle Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, He rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we come to you with hearts of thankfulness for the wonderful way you have kept us going daily through our lives. You have provided us with health, strength, food and love. We worship you for your wonderful blessings. We are glad that you worry about us every waking hour of our lives. Help us to show the same love to our neighbours and teach us, Lord, to come to care for them and pray for them. We pray for our church and all those who dwell here. We want to pray for the many activities of the Church and that you give us the eagerness to carry them out. We pray that the Sunday School will start. We want the children to come to you, Lord. Teach us to educate them in your ways. We want to remember the Bishop and all those, all his responsibilities. Lord, <coughs> give him good health and wisdom to run the diocese wisely. Lord, bless the young Dipartuan and the cabinet ministers. Give them wisdom to govern this country fairly. We pray for all students, especially the UPC undergraduates. Keep them in the safety of your wings. We pray for the people of Ukraine and Russia. May peace arrive at their doors. We remember all those who are sick and suffering. Lord, be with them. Be their doctor and helper. Provide them with comfort. We pray for Pastor Charles and Deaconess Dorina. May his next five years in Slim River, service to Slim River, be a blessing to all of us. Lord, listen to, the, listen to our prayer as we ask in the name of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Shalom brothers and sisters, here are some announcements. Welcome to this morning's online service. Once again, we thank Sister Vivian for compiling uh, for us all the way from Saba. Praise the Lord. So today is uh, online service and for next Sunday, the fifth Sunday of May, it is also online service. However, from June onwards, the first Sunday is June 5th, yeah? so from June onwards, all services in church, uh, all services will be in church every Sunday. Yeah? So from June onwards, all services in church every Sunday. What it means is that we will uh, go back to the pre-COVID-19 arrangement 
That means every Sunday we will have at 9 a.m. we will have the uh, English service and then at 10.30 we have the Chinese service and at 4.30 p.m. we have the Tamil service every Sunday. Yeah. So this was the decision that the PCC made in our meeting last Thursday and uh, we pray that, uh, that that will continue. Yeah. So we won't have online services but uh, we plan to record the message, yeah, only the message, and also put it up on YouTube, so that it is a record uh, of our uh, of the message, which uh, others may use, yeah, those who really cannot come on that Sunday. So praise the Lord, we are moving uh, forward in this matter. May the Lord have mercy on us and on Malaysia and on all the world, yeah, as we open up. So for Agape, they, they already have their on-site services, Fridays and Sundays. Uh, Fridays now, uh, usually they will have prayer meetings or Bible studies. And then Sundays at 10 a.m., they have a, a morning prayer uh, service, usually. And Rasa also, they already have their on, on-site service every uh, Saturday. And also they started their cell group or small group meeting on Wednesdays, also at night. So continue to pray for Deaconess in her traveling. And do pray for the Sungkai Chinese outreach. We are thankful and praise God for the Tamil speaking work going on there under the leadership of uh, Canon John Ganapati and also support of uh, uh, members of different churches, including uh, from our church. Praise the Lord. So remember, we still continue to need to care for others, any needy ones. Uh, if you think the church can help or should help, do inform me or Deaconess or any of our PCC uh, members. Yeah? And we will do what we can. The church will help under God, to the glory of God. So brothers and sisters, let us continue to stay safe and healthy. So uh, even in our church services, uh, beginning in June, we will wear our masks. Yeah? Uh, we won't be uh, recording the attendance but we will still have the, uh, end, uh, the, what you call it, the sanitizing spray for our hands and so on. And we will do the sanitizing at the end of uh, the Chinese service every week. So do be prayerful, uh, care for others and obey the Lord. That will be the mark of us loving the Lord Jesus. So in closing, brothers and sisters, let us bless one another using the apostolic grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and evermore. Amen. So brothers and sisters, go in peace and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. Trembles at his voice Trembles at his voice